What's up, kings and queens? It's your boy, Dan, from Daft Previews, and I'm here once again to give you the most comprehensive NBA player prop preview you're going to see today. I had a pretty decent day yesterday, 1.8 units profit, 5-3 and three on single bets. Uh, not the greatest day I was looking for, but hey, we'll take it. It's another winning day. If it's your first time watching these videos, I do this every single day. I take you through outline.bet. I share my screen. I take you through all the key players. We look at their matchup. We look at their form lines. I tell you what I like, and I tell you what I don't. And I do all this to give you all the information that you need to make the best bets possible. Now, if that sounds interesting, let's go. So we've got 11 games to get through on this one, so I apologize if I move quite quick through this one. But firstly, we're looking at the Charlotte Hornets versus the Cleveland Cavaliers. We've got JT Thor, Max Struess, Dean Wade, all game time decisions in this one, but a lot of players' props are currently available, so let's dive straight in. We'll start with the Cleveland Cavaliers, Karis LeVert. So his points prop here is at 15 and a half up against the Charlotte Hornets. He's covered this line in five out of his last 10 games, four out of his last five. In head-to-head -head matchups, one out of his last three against the Charlotte Hornets. He does have a somewhat difficult matchup. The Hornets, surprisingly, don't allow many points to shooting guards. They also play at a very slow, play, so slow pace, meaning not too many opportunities to score. Uh, Karis LeVert, I'm not how to hate this. I'd obviously lean to the over in this one. The Hornets are still not a great defensive team. They just play very slow. Karis LeVert, more than capable uh, of covering this line. Uh, Evan Mobley is back. That could have some impacts on his play and his um, scoring opportunities. But yeah, bit so so. Loving it. His assist prop, that line is at six and a half. He has covered this in eight out of his last 10 games. He does have a good matchup here against the Hornets, uh, but he has gone under in two consecutive games. Having a quick look to see why. And we can see minimal opportunities. His potential assists are down. His minutes were down against Miami as well. Only played 20 minutes in that game. Obviously, Cleveland lost by 40 points. In this particular game, the Cavs are 12-point favorites in this one. So, again, there's a chance of a blowout, but Karis LeVert should get some more game time. So I don't hate his assist prop, but Evan Mobley being back, I'm not sure whether that helps him or not. Looking at his head-to-head -head matchups, you have seven assists the last time he played the Hornets. Rebound-wise, lines at five and a half, two out of his last 10 games, and under in three consecutive games against the Charlotte Hornets. This is a plus money, plus 124. So I definitely lean to the under in this one, but I wouldn't take that with any confidence. Jumping into Darius Garland, his points prop 20 and a half. He's covered this in only six of his last 20, three out of his last 10 games. Matchup against the Hornets, not a really difficult one, but not a great one either. He has gone over in two out of his last three games against them. His assist prop, six and a half, five out of his last 10 games. One out of his last three against the Charlotte Hornets. And if you're interested in his three-point prop, that's at three and a half. He's only covered in three of his last ten. Does have a good matchup here, but he's gone under in three consecutive games against the Charlotte Hornets. Now, he just took Darius Garland's under in his first quarter points. So he's only covered this in two of his last ten. He's gone under in six consecutive games now. But in head-to-head -head matchups, he's gone over his first quarter prop in three consecutive games against the Charlotte Hornets, which is the reason why I'm not taking that same prop once again today. Jared Allen, 17 and a half is his points prop. Has a great matchup here against the Hornets, covered in four out of his last 10 games. Against the Hornets, one out of his last two. So he only scored four points the last time he played them. In that game, though, he only played 12 minutes. So I wouldn't put too much stock into that. He does have a great matchup, but Evan Mobley is back. Does that mean less opportunities for Allen? I would assume so, but you'd have to dive into that a little bit further. Looking at his rebound numbers, 11 and a half the line. Great matchup here, but he's only covered in four of his last 10. Had 12 rebounds, uh, six rebounds. So he had six rebounds in only 12 minutes in his last game against the Charlotte Hornets. So his rebound prop might not be a bad play, but Jared Allen, too inconsistent for my liking for this particular game. Jumping into these Hornets, we'll start with Miles Bridges. So his points line, 20 and a half. Tough matchup here against Cleveland. He's covered in five out of his last 10. He's yet to verse the, the Cavs since he's returned from his suspension. Assist-wise, three and a half, six out of his last 10. Rebound-wise, seven and a half, five out of his last 10. So he does have a difficult matchup for points and his rebounds. Uh, you could potentially look at it under for his points plus rebounds. You're looking at 27 and a half. He's cashed the under in only four of his last 10, though. So, But he does have a difficult matchup. Who else we got? Brandon Miller. His points for up 18 and a half. 
He's covered this in five out of his last 10. This is a road game for the Hornets. I mean, he typically goes under in his road games. But four, five out of his last 10. In terms of matchup, he's got a great matchup. He was playing the three. It's the weakest position for the Cavs. They defend all the other positions very well. But most likely, he'll have someone like Okora defending him, who's a pretty decent defender. So I'd lean to the under personally for Brandon Miller. And then if we have a look at my man, me chick. So was a great player to bet on. Slowed down a little bit, but his points prop of 11 and a half. Seven out of his last 10 games. A matchup somewhat difficult here against the Cavs. And his assist prop, four and a half. He's covered in five out of his last 10. We've also got Trey Mann. He's capable of filling up the stat sheet, but it's hard to predict when. Does have a difficult matchup here when it comes to scoring points. Ten and a half is the line. He's covered in five of his last ten. Four and a half is his line for assists. He's covered this in four consecutive games now. Five out of his last ten. And rebound-wise, three and a half. He's covered this in eight out of his last ten games. But he does have a difficult matchup here against the Cavs. So the over, minus 150. So I'm not a big fan of that for Trey Mann. So I personally, not loving anything in this particular game. So let's jump straight into the next one. It's the Brooklyn Nets versus the Toronto Raptors. Now, having a look at the lineups here, um, we've got a lot of players out, but no game time decisions. So the Toronto Raptors, very depleted at the moment. Brooklyn, um, somewhat healthy, I guess. Still messy, missing uh, Ben 10, Cam Johnson, but a lot of their key players will be available for this match. So um, we'll start with the Brooklyn Nets. We'll start with Dennis Schroeder, actually. So his points prop is at 14 and a half. Now, I'm personally leaning to the under on this one. Just letting you know now. In terms of the matchup, it's a tough one. The Raptors allow the third fewest points to point guards on the season. Schroeder, he's only covered this line in four of his last 10. So he's gone under in six games, three consecutive games he's gone under. He versus the Raptors once since he joined the, joined the Nets. He scored four points in that game in 23 minutes, shot one from seven from the field. So yeah, I don't mind the under in this one. Um, Schroeder has let me... I think I bettered him to score 10 points in one of these games, and he fucking... Finish on nine, I think. That Brooklyn game was painful. But anyway, we move on. His assist prop, six and a half. He's got a great matchup here against the Raptors. He's covered in six out of his last 10. Only had two assists the last time he played them. Coming into Cam Thomas, leading scorer for the Brooklyn Nets. So his matchup against Toronto is a good one. He's covered in four out of his last 10 games in head-to-head -head matchups. He's gone under in four straight, has played limited minutes in those first three games. So the last game against the Raptors scored 19 points, but in that game, the Raptors blew him out by 30. So chances are he gets a, it's a closer game in this one. The Brooklyn Nets are six-point favorites. So Cam Thomas overs, yeah, I don't mind it, but don't love it enough to dive any further. His assist prop does have my interest, though. Lines at three and a half. The matchup's not the easiest one in the world, but six out of his last 10. If we have a look at his potential assists, we can see over his last four games, they've really increased. So I don't hate that. Uh, and head-to-head -head matches, one out of his last four. And then rebound prop is at four and a half. Six out of his last 10 uh, has gone under in four straight against the Raptors. Let's have a look at Nick Claxton. So we just bet on Nick Claxton under in his rebound prop. We'll look at his points prop, and then we'll get to the boards. So he's got a good matchup here, right? The Raptors missing off. <laughs> Missing Jakob Pertl, missing Boucher. Um, they got Kelly Olenek playing big minutes at the center spot. So Nick Claxton should have the advantage here. I did see a media article um, after this last game against the Brooklyn Nets where he was quite frustrated saying, I'm open a lot of the time. I'm just not getting the ball. So he only took five shot attempts. Mm -hmm. I wonder if the Brooklyn Nets respond to that and they feed Nick Claxton a little bit more. Um, I, I do have a feeling he goes over. Uh, it does have a good matchup, and if he's complaining publicly, chances that the team might respond to that. So watch his points prop clearly, and if he does go over and get a lot of shots, you know why. Um, in head-to-head -head matchups, he has covered this line in five of his last six. Did only score six points in that 30-point 30, 30 loss mm -hmm. to the Raptors the last time they played. Let's jump into his rebound prop. So it's despite falling under. So his line was at 10.5 against the Knicks. We took his under, finished on nine. Uh, despite going under in of his last 10 games, his line has increased to 11 and a half. And the reason for that is this wonderful matchup against the Raptors. I have a feeling that I could potentially jump higher than Kelly Olenek. Like I could have a higher vert than him. I obviously can't reach higher than Kelly, but not the most athletic big man you're going to see. So Nick Clark's a definite advantage there when it comes to getting some rebounds. So I'm not going to play the under, 
but I also don't have the confidence in taking the 11 and a half. In head-to-head matches, he's gone under in five out of his last six against the Toronto Raptors. We've all agreed we're not looking at Michael Bridges in this one, so let's jump into these Toronto Raptors. We'll start with Kelly Olynyk. So I do have two leans for Kelly Olynyk, and they're both unders. So looking at his points prop, though, 13 and a half to line, six out of his last 10, scored eight points in that last game against the Brooklyn Nets. His assist prop, six and a half, it's plus money, four out of his last 10, tough matchup, one assist last time. And his rebound prop, six and a half. He's only covered this in one out of his last 10 games, and he's got a difficult matchup here against Nick Claxton. So originally, I was just looking at his under and his rebound prop. So I've taken that bet a few times since he joined the starting lineup, and it's cashed every time. Six and a half. If you look at the under for that, minus 105. So the odds are pretty good. The other prop that I was looking at, probably for a little bit of safety, I was looking at his under and rebounds plus assists. Now, he's gone under in seven out of his last 10. The hit rate isn't as... I would say solid as his rebound prop, although putting the assist line here because his assist line is quite high. He's got a difficult matchup for both. I feel like it could be a sweat-free bet if the Brooklyn Nets are absolutely pumping them. So this is a home game for the Raptors. And look, looking at his home games, check this out. His last 10 home games, Kelly olynyk has gone under 13 and a half rebounds and assists in every single one of them. So yeah, that's one of my leans. Also, we've got Gary Trent Jr. So his points props, 20 and a half. So his hit rates for this, they probably don't look great. To get this type of opportunity every single time. In terms of the matchup, it is a difficult one. He's covered in four of his last 10. Did score 25 points the last time against the Brooklyn Nets. Covered in one out of his last five. Um, Agbaji. So this is somebody that I was considering. Um, he's seen a recent lift in his opportunities, so his points are up. So really, it's his last five games. He's playing 30 plus minutes. So if we just break things down by his last five, um, we can see that he's covered in three out of his last five when it comes to scoring. His assist prop of two and a half, one out of his last five, so that's not great. And his rebound line of five and a half, he's covered in three out of his last five. So rebounds and points, probably the best way to go for this guy. 16 and a half, he's covered it in his last two, um, but should have a somewhat difficult matchup if it's Dorian Finney-Smith on him. But the play that I was actually considering is his first quarter points. Now check this out. In the last five games, since he's seen the increased opportunity, he's been starting every single game. He's averaging 10 minutes in the, each first quarter. He's covered this first point, uh, first quarter prop in five consecutive games. So that's why it's a lean for me. And what I'm needing to look into here is, like, I do like the pick, but I need to see the odds. So we're seeing minus 140 here on Outlier. I'll be line shopping between all my books that I use. And if I find one, sometimes I can see it for 140 on Outlier and find it for 110. And if I see it for 110, minus 105, um, I'll definitely be taking it. So that's definitely a lean of mine. I don't mind that play. But let's jump into the next game. So Boston Celtics versus the Atlanta Hawks. Derek White's a game-time decision, as well as Xavier Tillman. Atlanta, no game-time decisions, but a lot of main players are out for them. So the Brooklyn Nets, 12... Uh, Brooklyn Nets. The Boston Celtics, 12-point favorites in this game. Let's get through it. We'll start with these Boston Celtics. We'll go with Kristaps Porzingis first. So his points prop, 18 and a half. Check this out. Covering in seven out of his last 10. He's covered in 61% of games this year, 70% of games in his last 20. 14 of his last 20 games, he's gone over this. The matchup, it's not the hardest one. It's not an easy one either, but in head-to-head matchups, did score 31 points the last time against the Atlanta Hawks. Looking at his rebound prop, six and a half. It's plus money, but he's only covered in four of his last 10. He does have a good matchup, but he only had three rebounds last time he played the Hawks. Uh, the lean that I have at the moment is for his three-pointer prop. Check this out. Over one and a half three-pointers made. So he's covered this in eight out of his last 10 games. He did only hit two three-pointers last time he versed the Hawks. Only attempted four shots. Now, in his last 10 games, he's attempting 6.3 three-point attempts per game. He's shooting them at a 41% clip. So at that percentage, we need to have at least five attempts from Kristaps Porzingis to cover this line. And if he's averaging six, I don't mind it. The challenge I need to work through is the fact that the Hawks allow the second fewest three-pointers made to centers on the season. So if you think about it, there's a lot of centers out there who just don't shoot three-pointers. So I'll dive into that a little bit further and see what type of juice I can find. We'll see how Clint Capella defends a pick and roll, how he helps on D, yada, yada, yada. So yeah, that's definitely one lead of mine. Have a look at Derek White. Points prop of 13 and a half. Uh, he's covered this in 
five out of his last 10, four consecutive games now, which is pretty wild. He does have a good matchup as well. Um, and I have a feeling it's, what, the Drew Holiday impact? No Drew Holiday in this game. So if you look at his last 10 games with Holiday, Derek White has covered this line in nine out of his last 10 games. So, woo-wee, I don't mind this. I didn't even know I had this on my short list. So here we go. Derek White overs in points. So, so that's a very interesting stat in head-to-head matchups. There's a lot of playoff games in this, um, but he's got a good hit rate out of his eight out of his last 11 against the Atlanta Hawks. Derek White has covered 13 and a half points. Looking at his at six and a half, he's covered in five out of his last 10. Has had big assist games, and I'm pretty sure, again, Drew Holiday impact. So let's have a look at it without Drew Holiday. And he's covered in five out of his last 10 games without Drew Holiday. That's not screaming out to me. That does look amazing. And then he's rebound prop at four and a half. He's covered this in nine out of his last 10 games. God damn. So that's pretty wild. Five out of his last 11 against the Hawks. If we do the same thing and we filter without Drew Holiday, Derek White's covered in seven out of his last 10. So his rebound prop of four and a half plus money could entertain that, but he has finished on five quite a few times. So that might be a pretty sweaty bet, but I do like his points prop. I must tell you. Jalen Brown. So he's got a good matchup here against the Atlanta Hawks. He's covered this line of 23 and a half in eight out of his last 10 games in head-to-head matchups, five out of his last 10 against Atlanta, but he has gone under in the two games this season. His assist prop of three and a half, four of his last 10, and in head-to-head matchups, three of his last 10. Rebound-wise, five out of his last 10, four out of his last 10 against Atlanta. So if you are going to bet on Jalen Brown, look, probably the points are the best way to go. But this Boston team is stacked, right? As you saw, Derek White numbers go up with Drew Holiday out. Jalen Brown could get it done. Jason Tatum. We looked at Christoph Porzingis' numbers, and he's been killing it as a late. Peyton Pritchard starting at point guard. He's been able to make it rain in limited opportunities. So, yeah, just can't really back too many of these players with confidence, I guess. Having a look at Jason Tatum now. His points prop at 26 and a half. He's covered this in five out of his last 10. He's got a great matchup against Atlanta, and he's covered in six out of his last 10 games against the Hawks. His assist prop of five and a half, five out of his last 10, six out of his last 10 against Atlanta, and rebound-wise, seven and a half. He's only covered in three out of his last 10, and he has covered in eight of his last 10 against the Atlanta Hawks. So, yeah, this Boston Celtics team can be very difficult to nail some of these individual props. They can get rebounds, points, assists from anybody. So, yeah, I'm a little bit hesitant, but let's jump into these Atlanta Hawks. DeJounte Murray, his points prop 25 and a half. He's covered in five out of his last 10 games. The Celtics, the way that they structure their defense, don't defend point guards very well. So DeJounte Murray has a great opportunity here. In mean, head-to-head matchups, he's only covered in one of his last eight, but now you've got to factor in the Trey Young factor. So no Trey Young. DeJounte Murray is a pretty bad man. Looking at his assist line of eight and a half, he's covered this in seven of his last 10, five consecutive games now. The Boston Celtics, though, allow the six fewest assists in the league to point guards, the 11th fewest. So difficult matchup, which is why we see his line drop from nine and a half to eight and a half in this game. I'm a little bit hesitant, so I'm not too keen on taking it. Rebound-wise, we're looking at five and a half. Has a good matchup here against the Boston Celtics who allow the fourth most rebounds to point guards in head-to-head matchups, five out of his last eight. So. Not loving that. We've got uh, DeAndre Hunter, pretty high line, 17 and a half. He's covered this in four of his last 10 games. In terms of the matchup against Boston, it's a tough one. Uh, Four of his last 10 in head-to-head matchups, four out of his last 11. One person that I do have a lean on here is uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich, though. So his points line of 17 and a half. He's only cashed this in two out of his last 10. In terms of matchups, does have a somewhat difficult one here against the Boston Celtics. And in head-to-head matchups, he has covered it in the past. Three out of his last eight. So he's very capable of covering this line. This was three and a half the line. Six out of his last ten. Three out of his last eight against Boston. And rebounds, three and a half. Four of his last ten. And five out of his last eight against the Celtics. So I'm personally looking at an under in his points plus assists. In head-to-head matches, three of his last eight he's covered this. And in his last 10 games, he's covered in only two of his last 10. He's had five games where he's gone under this. He does have a difficult matchup for both points and assists. Uh, if we look at his three-point market, which is you know where he gets a lot of his points from, Celtics allow the 12th fewest three-pointers made on the season. 
And in terms of shooting guards, the six fewest. So, yeah, definitely that's a lean of mine. Not overly confident in it, but something that I do want to investigate a bit further. We then have Clint Capella. Ten and a half points. He's covered in seven out of his last ten. Somewhat difficult matchup. And he's covered in two of his last nine against Boston. Rebound-wise, you're looking at nine and a half. He has covered in seven out of his last ten games. The Celtics do allow the fewest rebounds to centers on the season. In head-to-head matchups, he's covered in only two out of his last nine. So perfect example of this, Boston Celtics and Kristaps Porzingis standing out in the perimeter. And not too long ago, I think we took I took Nikola Vucevic at an alt line. I think I only need eight rebounds for one of these bitch-ass parlays. Took him against Boston, and I'm pretty sure he only had three or four rebounds in that whole game. So he had pro- previously, he was killing Boston. But now Kristaps is there, completely different story. So I fucked up in taking his rebounds. I'd honestly lean to the under here for, for Clint Capella, despite these wonderful numbers recently. I'd lean to the under purely on that Porzingis matchup. Let's jump into the next game. It's the Los Angeles Clippers versus the New York Knicks. Now we've got Cade Tecchio, Jalen Duran, Taj Grip Gibson, Quentin Grimes, all game time decisions here for the Detroit Pistons. So we've only got limited lines available. Jaden Ivey and Cade Cunningham's the only ones on the board at the moment. Let's go through Cade Cunningham first. So whenever Cade Cunningham plays, I seem to get a bet on him. I did bet on him in the last game, and then he pulled out, so back i guess but looking at his points prop here tough matchup against new york he's covered in five out of his last 10 last two games against the knicks 31 and 32 points though his assist line at six and a half he's covered in eight of his last 10 games had six plus and 10 straight head-to-head matchup seven eight and eight against the new york knicks so he's made it rain on him rebound wise you're looking at three and a half he's covered in eight of his last 10 two of his last three against the knicks so a lot of his Lions, honestly, very promising. His rebounds and assist line has been great as of late. Makes it look even better is the fact that he does have a difficult matchup, so his line has been reduced a little bit. But I'm personally leaning on this, the over 10.5 rebounds plus assists. I like it for a few reasons. His hit rate over his last 10 is pretty good. Eight out of his last 10, uh, plus money play as well, so you know that I do like the value. I know that the matchup is somewhat difficult, but I don't see the Knicks... Having someone probably outside of Josh Hart with the size and lateral quickness to really defend Cade Cunningham and slow him down, get him off the glass. Cade Cunningham, get these assists and rebounds regardless of who he plays with. Uh, this is one of the leans that I have. A line shop. And obviously, if come, I can find great odds and more reasons to take this bet, you know I will. Looking at Jaden Ivey, his points line of 14 and a half. Tough matchup here against the Knicks, but he's covered this in six of his last 10, four consecutive games now. Against the Knicks, two out of his last five. His assist prop of two and a half. This used to be at three and a half, and he was hitting it quite well. Has struggled with that as of late. Two and a half minus 165, and he's hitting seven of his last 10. He's also hitting four of his last five against the Knicks. So I'd lean to the over on his assist prop here, but the odds aren't great. So I'm not overly interested in it. Jumping into the New York Knicks, Dalen Brunson. Points line of 30 and a half. He's got a good matchup here, but he's only covered in three out of his last 10 games. In head-to-head matchups, 42 and 35 points in his last two games against the Pistons. His assist prop of six and a half. He's hit this in five of his last 10, three straight, and three of his last six against the Detroit Pistons. Rebounds, if you're interested in that, three and a half, five of his last 10, two of his last six against Detroit. Dante DiVincenzo. So his points line of 17 and a half. He's covered in four out of his last 10. Uh, the matchups are pretty decent one. Head-to-head matchups is covered in one of two against the Pistons. We've got Miles McBride. So he's recently been promoted to the starting lineup, seeing more minutes, more opportunities. And you can see it here. His last three games, he's played 40, 46, 44, and 48 minutes. My Lord, Tim's giving him a workout. So he's covered this line of 13 and a half in two, two out of his last three, four of his last 10, though. And he's taken 13, 9, and then 16 shot attempts, which is pretty crazy. From downtown, he made six three-pointers in two of these games, which is absolutely wild. So you might fancy the three-point prop. You might even just want to take him for 20 points and see how you go because the value would be absolutely crazy. That could be a quarter-unit play. But the points prop, definitely more than capable. He's capable of doubling that if he's going to get 40-plus minutes. Assist-wise, we're not seeing too much activity there. And if we look at his rebound prop, it's two and a half, so he's not getting too many of those. So he's really just... Of the Dante DiVincenzo mold, he's just gunning from downtown. 
So check this out. The Pistons allow the fewest three-pointers made to shooting guards on the season. Overall, they allow the seventh fewest as a team. So what that tells me is they're probably allowing them in the mid-range and in the paint. Uh, so this may not be the game. I'm not too familiar with Miles McBride, his game, his, his style there, but you know, shoots a lot of threes. I can see that, and that might not be the right man, but he's definitely someone to look out for the next time the Knicks play. Who else have we got? We've got Josh Hart. So Josh Hart's points line, 12 and a half. He's got a good matchup, but he struggled to score in five consecutive games now. Four of his last 10, he's covered this. Did score 23 points the last time against the Pistons, one of his last two. His assist line at five and a half, he's covered in four of his last 10, one of his last two. And rebound props, I think the lines are pretty sharp now. Ten and a half is where it deserves to live. He's still covered this in seven of his last ten, um, and he went under in his last two games against the Detroit Pistons. So I have, even despite Josh Hart's great streak, I still wasn't able to nail his props consecutively. He got too adventurous with it. So, yeah, no bets on Josh Hart from me on this one. Pumping the brakes real quick on this one. Firstly, I do want to apologize if you hear some snoring in the background. Um... My dog's sleeping under the table, and as much as I try to nudge her, she continues to snore. So I do apologize. What other announcements have I got? Probably more of a public service announcement is that if you don't like the picks that are being put up, you don't have to bet on them. So don't you dare put comments in there saying that I've lost you money because I have not. Not once have I proclaimed to be good at this. I just like doing it. I like research. I'm a profitable sports better, and that's all there is to it. Second announcement to make is not, not an announcement, actually. I fucked that one up. More of a goal for you guys. Let's put a like goal out of here. Um, subscribers are growing real quick. Ready over 5,250 or something like that. We only hit 5K not too long ago, so it won't be long before we hit 6,000. So like the video if you like what you see so far. Sub to the channel if you're new. I do this every single day and help us hit this next milestone of 6,000. The one thing that will help us get there is if you like and comment on this video. So I want to set a like goal here. 300 likes is what I'm looking for. So hit the thumbs up. Let's get back to the preview. Let's go. So we're taking a look at the Phoenix Suns versus San Antonio Spurs. Uh, now, they did just play, if my memory is correct. And one thing that you know if you watch this every night is I don't really like betting on these games where the teams go back to back because weird shit always seems to happen. But let's see how we go. Um, Victor Wembanyama, he's a game time decision in this one. So he's the only prop available for the San Antonio Spurs. And if he doesn't play, I think it kind of fucks things up for both teams when it comes to betting props. But let's check Victor Wembanyama out. Firstly, his injury, what's he got? Left ankle sprain. So he's covered this line in five out of his last 10 games. Only scored 13 points against the Phoenix Suns in the last game. In head-to-head -head matchups, he's hit this in one out of three games against them. His assist prop, three and a half, six out of his last 10 games, one out of his last three against the Suns. And his rebound props at 10.5. It's plus money. Seven out of his last 10. Only had five rebounds in that last game against Phoenix. And he's gone under in three straight against them. So that matchup with Yusuf Nurkic, definitely get, definitely a Victor Wembanyama's are. So yeah, I'd link to the under if I had to out of all of those three props. But let's jump into these Phoenix Suns. I've got a few leans as well to get through. Let's start with D-Book. His points prop, 26 and a half. He's got a great matchup here against the Spurs. Just scored 32 points against them. He's covered in four of his last 10. And three out of his last four. So he's versus Spurs twice this year. He scored 31 and 32 points against them. Looking at his assist prop, that line's at six and a half. He's covered in six of his last 10, three out of his last four against the Spurs, and he covered his assists and his in both games against the Spurs. And looking at his rebound prop of four and a half, he's covered in six out of his last 10. Head to head matchups, he's covered in both games against the Spurs. So Devin Book has not taken it light on these guys. The Phoenix Suns, 12.5 point favorites in this game. I don't like betting on D-Book too much, but his PRA could be a good option, or his points plus assist could be an option. So PRA is hitting six of his last 10. Uh, he hit it in both games against the Spurs this year. He's absolutely obliterated, actually. 37.5 is the line. 53 and 48 in his last two games against the Spurs. And if we look at his points plus assists, that line's at 32 and a half. He's only covered this in three out of his last 10. And in head-to-head -head matchups, 44 and 41 against the Spurs. So he's absolutely killed it there. So I think if we're going to take a D book play, possibly that PRA could be a good one. He's pretty much covered all three lines against the Spurs. So his PRA I don't hate. He's got a good match all over the shop. So 
Yeah, that could definitely be a lean, but I'm worried. He just destroyed the Spurs as he go back to verse them again in the same venue and nail these same types of numbers. That's what worries me because that's burnt me in the past. But I'll I'll put it on my short list of things to look out for. Might even just have a small play to value play to take D book over points, over rebounds, over assists. I don't know. I don't know, but we shall see. Let's have a look at Bradley Beal. So I've had a success betting on Bradley Beal at the moment. One thing I have been betting on with some success is over in his assist prop. I then took the risk of betting his under in his points prop, and that started to cash for me as well. So let's take a look at this. Points wise, 16 and a half. He's covered in five out of his last 10. The reason I took an under in his points prop in the last game is purely because the volume hasn't been there. It is starting to increase, though, so that's a little bit of a worry. But the volume for Bradley Brill, well under what his averages have been throughout the season. In head-to-head matchups, scored 13 points. That was his first matchup against the Spurs. Assist. Now, this is what's been making us a lot of money with Bradley Beal. We caught the up, uh, the, the we caught the positive trend. So his line was usually, it, when I first started betting this, it was at 4.5. Then it moved to 5.5. Now it's up to 6.5, and, and it's plus money. And i got to tell you, I'm still considering taking it. Seven out of his last 10, six consecutive games, potential assists, super high. For him to get seven, I'd really need to see about 12 to 13 potential assists, at least for Bradley Bill. But against his Spurs defense, which isn't that great, you could really get 10 potential assists and for him to get this. So, yeah, I like Bradley Bill's assists. I will need to check the odds, of course. But if I can find odds like this or even better, I'll be all over it. So, one matchup against the Spurs, and he did have 12 assists. I think he had seven assists in the first half, I believe. So, yeah, I don't mind that for Bradley Beal. Rebound-wise, three and a half to the line. He's covered in six out of his last 10, and he had one rebound against the Spurs last time. Who else we got? Kevin Durant. So his points line, 24 and a half. If the Spurs play defense for any position, it's definitely around the power forward spot. He's covered this in five out of his last 10. He's hit this in three out of his last four against the Spurs. Looking at his assist prop, that's at three and a half, seven out of his last 10, two of his last four against the Spurs, and his rebound, six and a half, six out of his last 10. It's gone under in four consecutive games against the San Antonio Spurs. So, yeah, if I had to take a pick there, probably lean to the under on his rebounds, maybe his points plus his rebounds, but yeah, easy money sniper. I don't want to hedge. I don't want to bet against him. Have a look at Yusuf Nurkic now. His points line, 10 and a half. He's only covered in two out of his last 10. He does have a great matchup, but the Spurs allow a lot of points to centers because a lot of the centers that come up against Victor Wimbanyama go absolutely crazy. Yusuf Nurkic is not built like that. He's gone under in both games against the San Antonio Spurs, or his last two games, sorry. One out of his last three he's covered in, but shot attempts aren't very high. His minutes aren't very high. The minute they get out to a big lead, this is the first person that's going to take a break. So two out of his last 10 he's been able to cover in. So I'd probably lean to the under with that one. His assist prop of three and a half. He's covered in five of his last 10 against the Spurs. He's gone under in his last two. And rebound wise, 11 and a half, five out of his last 10. And he's gone under in his last two games against the Spurs. So I personally am probably thinking an under in his points plus assists, rebounds. I don't know this man's capable of 20 rebounds. He'll go get the ball himself if he has to. This has hit quite well in his last two games against the Spurs. Spurs, tough matchup to get assists in general for centers. Points-wise, like I said, great matchup, but Yusuf Nurkic, he's not really gunning for it, is he? He's only taken five and seven shots against the San Antonio Spurs in their recent game. So that's one of the leans that I have. Uh, given the limited markets, let's jump into the next game. It's the Washington Wizards versus the Chicago Bulls in this one. Uh, Jordan Poole's a game-time decision. Kobe White, Alex Caruso as well. Um, I guess for the Wizards, Tyus Jones, Kuzma, they're all out of this game. So Jordan Poole, Denny Advia, probably going to do the majority of the heavy lifting here. But let's talk through these Wizards and the ones that are actually worth looking at. We'll look at Jordan Poole because if he does play, his usage rate should be quite high. Line at 21.5, three out of his last 10. None of that's great. Tough matchup to score some points against the Bulls. He'll most likely have... Um, Alex Caruso, perhaps, defending him. Tasson Mu, most likely. Pretty good perimeter defenders. So Jordan Paul, three of his last 10, scored 13 points the last time he versed the Chicago Bulls, but his usage rate should be through the roof. As of late, he's getting a lot more minutes in his last two games, but he's still only shooting 11 and 14 attempts. So despite the extra game time, shot attempts aren't there. So 
I know you're looking at minus 119, so that's definitely a lean. And then knowing that he's a game-time decision could also help that. His assist prop, that's at five and a half. He's covered this in four of his last 10, had 12 assists against the, Spurs, the Toronto Raptors last time and had eight assists against the Chicago Bulls. The matchup's not too bad there. Um, I'd probably lean to the over given his usage rate, but uh, not with too much confidence. Denny Advia, someone that should lift, but his lines always seem to be quite high. His points prop of 18 and a half is hitting two of his last 10. He's gone under in four straight against the Bulls. Assist-wise, five out of his last 10, one out of four against the Bulls, and rebounds, eight and a half, seven of his last 10, two out of his last four against the Bulls. Did have one game earlier this year with 20 rebounds against the Bulls, so I don't mind that. If I had to bet on him, it would probably be that rebound prop, eight and a half plus money. Um, but Bulls, 13-point favorites in this one. So tread carefully. Corey Kispert, now I do have a lean on this one purely because the hit rate's great and the value is awesome. Points-wise, you're not going to see anything great here. 17 and a half's a line. It's only covered in three of his last 10. Matchup's not overly difficult, but his line's quite high because of all the injuries. What I am considering taking, though, is this. I'm looking at an under two and a half assists for Corey Kispert. Now, he's hit this in only one out of his last 10 games. Had this crazy game with six assists against the Miami Heat. In his last 20, he's gone under in 14 of his last 20 games. As I look through this Washington team, who could Corey Kispert possibly pass to to score <laughs> is what I think to myself. The fact that you can get this for plus 126 um, is a pretty positive play. The Bulls do allow assist, some assist to point uh, shooting guards. My apologies. But... Corey Kispert, I feel like he's going to catch and shoot a lot in this game. He's going to try to take on the scoring role, I imagine. Playmaking is definitely not within his skill set. And if I can get something that's hit um, in 90% of his last 10 games at plus money, um, i definitely consider taking it. One thing I did have a quick look at is how does he go without Ty Jones and Kyle Kuzma? So they're their main ball players, right? Check this out. 10 games without Kyle Kuzma and Tyus Jones. Corey Kispert's gone under his assist prop in every single one of them. So, yeah, definitely leaning on that one. Outside of that, not too much from that team. Let's have a look at Kobe White. So he's a game-time decision, but he's likely to play. His line's at 19.5 as a more probably the most diff, one of the difficult matchups for the Wizards. They don't defend anybody very well, but if they did have to defend someone, if it's probably point guards, now, I'd lean to the under here. He's gone under in five consecutive games. He's trending down. He's covered in four of his last 10. And he's also gone under in four consecutive games against the Washington Wizards. His assist prop, four and a half. He's covered in five out of his last 10. Head-to-head matchups, he's gone under in four straight. And his rebound prop, four and a half. Four straight under against Washington. And he's covered in five of his last 10. The lean that I do have is actually an under in his first quarter points. The odds are great. Plus money. He's gone under four and a half points in eight out of his last 10 games, right? Pretty arousing. Then you look at his head-to-head matchup. He's gone under in four consecutive games against the Washington Wizards. One thing to keep in mind, all of these games, he was coming off the bench, so he didn't play his full complement of minutes. You can see there, less than five minutes on average. Over his last 10, he's getting nine and a half minutes in the first quarter. So um, I think this could be a sweaty bet, um, but... It's something I'm going to look into anyway because he still hasn't been hitting it as of late. And we know that Washington, if there is a position they defend better than most, or not most, but if there is a position they could defend, it probably is point guards by the looks of the numbers. Yeah, leaning on the under there for Kobe White, first quarter point. So if you do see that in the pinned comment, that's the reason why. Let's have a look at Nikola Vucevic. He's got a great matchup here. The Wizards, absolutely soft inside. He's covered this line in six of his last 10 and three out of his last five against the Wizards. His rebound prop of 10 and a half. He's hit in six of his last 10, three out of five against the Wizards as well. So um, good matchup for him, just not one of the players that I do like to bet on. Ayo Desonmu, his points prop here, 16 and a half, four out of his last 10 games. He scored 34 points the last time he versed Washington, but he went under four games prior to that. In that game, he played 40 minutes, shot the ball 22 times. If we look at his last five games, what's he doing? He's shooting the ball on average 16.8 times, so it's pretty juicy. You take getting someone who can make some threes, two and a half, three-pointers per game. If he shoots the ball 16 times, I'm pretty confident he can cover 16 and a half points. He's shooting 54% from the field, 
43% from deep and 100% from the line. So if he takes 16 shots, he's going to cover this line. Let me tell you. I'm actually going to consider taking it because I didn't put it on my short list, but I'll investigate that one. Um, if we look at his assist number, four and a half. He's covered in five out of his last 10. Had nine assists last time against Washington. So one out of his last five. Uh, he does have a good matchup for assists, but at any given night, it could be Kobe White, it could be DeMar DeRozan with a chief playmaking um, role. So yeah, a little bit hesitant and his rebounds. He's only hit that in three of his last 10. So not overly excited about his rebounds prop. Jumping into DeMar DeRozan now, he's lined at 25 and a half. He's covered this in five out of his last 10 against the Wizards. He's covered in three of his last four. He didn't only score 13 points the last time he played them. Assists, you're looking at four and a half. He's covered in five out of his last 10, uh, three out of his last four against Washington. And rebounds, his lines at four and a half, seven out of his last 10, two out of his last four against Washington. Uh, but he has gone under in his last two. So there's nothing from DeMar DeRozan I'm really feeling. Uh, so let's jump into the next game. Got, what, four different picks that I'm going to consider for this one. So that's going to be fun activity after this video. I've got a whole lot of picks to dive through. We've got the Portland Trailblazers and the Houston Rockets in this one. We've got Anthony Simons, DeAndre Aiden, Matisse Thibel, Jeremy Grant, all game time decisions in this one, so which seems to be a, a real common trend for Portland. So a lot of times when I do this video, props aren't available, so I don't get to preview too many of them. But let's have a look at Simons and then Aiden, and then we get to Houston. So his line of 22 and a half, he's covered in seven out of his last 10, which is pretty good. Last two games, he's gone under. In head-to-head -head matchups, he's sparked the Rockets. Four consecutive games, he's gone over this points prop. Houston Rockets, um, they are missing Jabari Smith Jr. and Sangoon. So Jeff Green, old man. I think Jeff Green's as old as me, so that motherfucker is old. Starting at center in this game. So definite mismatch on the interior for DeAndre Aiden, but I'll talk about Aiden in a second. So Simons hit this prop well, and he's hit it against the Rockets. Assist prop, four and a half. He's covered this in seven of his last 10, two of his last four against the Rockets. He likes to bomb from deep. He's hit this in seven out of his last 10 and, and in all four games against the Rockets. The matchup for threes, not the greatest one, though. The Rockets pretty good defensively on the perimeter. Now, DeAndre Aiden, his points prop, 19 and a half. He's covered this in eight out of his last 10 games. He's gone under. He scored 18 points in his last game against the Houston Rockets. I did say that they're without Jabari Smith Jr. and Alperin Sengun. So Jeff Green's going to be starting there. So DeAndre Aiden does have a massive, massive advantage. But I'm not taking this bet on DeAndre Aiden because it's a game time decision. He's got left elbow tendonitis. And from all accounts and from all the games that I've seen for DeAndre Aiden, he's a bit of a bitch. So even though the numbers look great, I feel like he's the type of guy to perform poorly just because his elbow is a little bit sore. Now, I might be wrong. Right, he might just overpower Jeff Green and anybody that comes near him, but I'm not going to take the bet on DeAndre Aiden. Looking at his rebound line, 12 and a half. He's covered in six of his last 10 games. Has a pretty good matchup here, um, and he had 17 rebounds against the Houston Rockets last time. So, yeah, rebounds. I can't see how he doesn't get this. So you don't have to. Offensively, he might lack some aggression trying to get some boards, but significant size advantage here. I'm going to check the depth chart. So I'll put this on my list of leans, but I'm going to check the depth chart in this game to see who else have the Houston Rockets got on the bench. Bench. They do have Jock Landau, so Jock Landau could possibly give DeAndre Aiden some problems, but no, I don't know. We'll check to see. Um, Houston Rockets. So who do we have? We'll start with Fred Van Vliet. Now, he's been playing very well as of late. I've hit quite a few bets on Fred most recently, so let's check this out. When it comes to scoring, he does have a good matchup. He's covered this line in five of his last 10. He did score 18 in two consecutive games against the Trailblazers. His assist prop of seven and a half is a lot lower than what we have seen. He's covered this in eight out of his last 10, one out of his last two against Portland. So there's a lot of green on this chart. Eight out of his last 10, he's covered. Uh, minus 145. Honestly, this looks like a line that's probably too good to be true. I, I don't know why I'm thinking that, but that's the vibe that I'm getting. Because in a game where the Rockets are 12-point favorites, Fred's been diamond like a mofo. I think the only reason why this line would be at 7.5, there's a potential blowout risk, but there's also the risk that Fred does what he did in the last game against Utah and absolutely bombs them. 
and takes on the scoring load and not so much the assist side of the thing. Uh, his rebound prop, three and a half. He's covered in five of his last 10, one of two against Portland. So there ain't no fun there. There is a Fran Vliet play that I am leaning on at the moment, and that's his first quarter assist. So as you know, I like plus money. So we're looking at plus 120. We spoke about the matchup being great. He has hit this in five consecutive games now. Now what's happened in the last five games is if we've seen Alpha and Shingun unfortunately get injured. Alpha and Shingun, it's been six games this season without Alper and Shingun, and Fred's cashed the over in his first quarter assist in five of those six games. So that's definitely a play that I'm liking, and for plus money, god damn, I think I'll be all over that. Having a look at Jalen Green. So this guy's been an absolute machine on the scene. He's been killing it as a late. So very similar, right? Shingun's been out for six games. Jalen Green's covered this points prop in five out of his last six, so I like it already. He does have a good matchup. In the past, we've seen players like Anthony Edwards absolutely destroy the Portland Trailblazers. So I like Jalen Green to do the same. 25.5 points, 99.9% sure i will be taking the over. In head-to-head matchups, he's also covered in the two games against Portland this season, 29 and 27 points. I might even take Jalen Green for 30, maybe 35. Could ladder Jalen Green up, but I think he's got a great matchup. The usage rate's there. The shot attempts are sky high. 20-plus shots per game in his last five. So, And we know Jabari Smith Jr. replaced with Jeff Green. He might take even more shots. So I do like that for Jeff Green, looking at his points. Uh, Assist-wise, the line's at two two and a half. He's covered this in eight of his last ten. So he's got a great matchup, great hit rate. It's minus 119. And he's hit it in his last three against the Portland Trailblazers. So maybe to switch things up, I might take his points plus assists because there's a very small chance here that he probably doesn't hit his points line, but he racks up the assist numbers. I mean, you can see he's hit this in four out of the last six games uh, without Shingun. Um, points plus assists could be a good play. Head-to-head, he has hit those in his last two games. So covering his points and an assist prop as of late, I just think points-wise probably has a bigger upside. Three-point prop. So we did ladder his three-point prop. Took him for, th- for what, four and five three-pointers. That's a pretty good odds on that. He ended up finishing with seven with Utah. Not taking his three-point prop in this one because the Portland Trailblazers allow the fifth fuel three-pointers this season. They allow the third fuel three-pointers to shooting guards. In head-to-head matchups, he's only covered this in one out of his last four. So I'd lean to the over, but it's not going to be as easy as his past matchups. Outside of that, I had a quick scan. Thompson, nothing too arousing in that for me, and Dylan Brooks as well. My God, there's a lot of games. We've got four more to get through. Now, let's go. If you haven't already, like, subscribe. Give me all that good stuff. We've got the Memphis Grizzlies versus the Denver Nuggets. Desmond Bain, Jamal Murray, Nikola Jokic, LaRavia, Lamar Stevens, Brandon Clark, John Choncha, Vince Williams. All game time decisions. My God, what is going on here? So we've only got four props available. And three out of the four players are game time decisions. So I don't know how much value you're going to get out of this. I'll say it nice and early. I don't like anything for this particular game. I know there's only four props available, but I don't like anything that I've seen. So let's quickly jump through it. Jaron Jackson Jr., 22 and a half is his points prop. Good matchup here against the Denver Nuggets. He's hitting six of his last 10, but he's gone under in five straight games against them. We have a look at Desmond Bain. Now, he's only been back for a few games now. Uh, how long has it been? Three games. 22, 24, and six points against the Warriors in head-to-head matchups. One out of his last four against Denver. His assists, four and a half. He's covered in five out of his last 10, and he's gone under in all games against Denver and rebounds three and a half, six of his last 10, gone under in two straight games against the Nuggets. Now, Denver, 14 and a half point favorites in this game. So high potential of a blowout here, but let's take a look. Nikola Jokic, his line of 27 and a half. He's covered in six out of his last 10 games. Decent matchup here against Memphis, but he's gone under his points prop in five straight games against them. Assist-wise, eight and a half. He's gone over in three of his last 10, three of his last five against Memphis. Rebounds, 13 and a half, five out of his last 10, two out of his last five against the Grizzlies. So even though there's a potential blowout here, last time he versed Memphis, Denver beat them by 37 points. And in that game, he still had 14 rebounds in only 30 minutes. So... I don't even feel confident taking an under if we predict a blowout in this one. Jamal Murray, six of his last 10, three out of his last four against Memphis. Assist-wise, six of his last 10, two out of his last four. Rebounds, six of his last 10, 
one out of his last four against Memphis. There's nothing on there that I like. I apologize for even going through that, but you might like it. Jump into the next game, and it is a game that I do like. My Dallas Mavericks. Now, I don't really support a team, but Kyrie Irving, Luka Doncic, I've got a lot of appreciation for the skill and talent they bring to basketball. They don't play defense. I could admit that, but it's all entertainment for me, and these guys are entertaining as fuck. And this game, Laurie Markkinen is a game-time decision, as well as Jordan Clarkson, Yurt Seven, and Maxi Kleber. So somewhat limited in the markets that are available at the moment. Let's have a look at Laurie Markkinen. I did have a lean on this nice and early. I was leaning to the under, right? He's gone under this in eight of his last 10 games. Low Markkinen uh, hasn't played too many games. Well, he has, but he tends to play a game that have one off, play a game, have one off. Now, Laurie does have a pretty good matchup here against Dallas. Um, not the greatest against large wings, threes and fours. In head-to-head matchups, he's covered in two of his last six. So I definitely lean to the under for Laurie Markkinen. Rebound-wise, four of his last 10. He's gone under in six consecutive games against the Dallas Mavericks, which is quite strange. Um, but I don't like it enough to take note of it. Keontae George, points props at 15 and a half. Tough matchup here against Dallas. Six of his last 10, one out of his last three against the Mavericks. Assist-wise, he's covered in three of his last 10, one out of his last three against the Mavs. And rebound-wise, five of his last 10, one out of his last three against the Mavericks. Finally, we get to Dallas. We'll start with Luka Doncic. So Luka covered this line of 33.5 in seven of his last 10 games. Dallas, eight-point favorites in this one. I have a feeling Utah will keep it somewhat close until late in the fourth and Dallas will pull away. They play with their food a little bit. But um, yeah, seven of his last 10, the matchup's not bad. Scored 34 points against them last time, two of his last five. Assists, 10 and a half the line, five out of his last 10, three out of his last five against Utah. And rebound-wise, nine and a half. He's covered in eight of his last 10 games. Does have a good matchup here, but he's only covered in two of his last five. So if I had to take a bet on Luke, I'd probably take lean the under on his PRA. I don't think he's required to score 40 points in this game. Um, his lines always seem to be a little bit elevated anyway. Um, and the sports books do that because a lot of people will take alternate lines for Luca. So I'd lean to the under, but not with too much confidence. Someone that I do have a lean on is my man Kyrie Irving. Now, I might be a little bit biased. One of my favorite players at the moment. His points prop low, 24 and a half. He's covered this in only three of his last 10 games. And against Utah, he's gone under in two of his last four. I lean to the under there for his uh, points prop, but it's not one that I'm strongly considering. Looking at his assist prop, five and a half is the line. He has covered this in four out of his last 10 games, two of his last four against Utah. Rebound-wise, four and a half is the line, six of his last 10 games, three of his last four against Utah. So the play that I'm considering for Kyrie, stay is over in his rebounds plus assists. So as you can see in his last five games, he's absolutely demolished this line. He's done a great job as of late. In head-to-head matchups, he's covered in three out of his last four. His last two covered this with ease, getting rebounds in one game, getting a lot of assists in the other. The matchup, not overly difficult in both of these things. And the Mavs playing quite a bit of team ball at the moment. Kyrie heavily involved in that. So that's one lean of mine, Kyrie over in rebounds and assists. Who else is there? Daniel Gafford. So this guy's a dunking machine sometimes. 24 points last game against Utah. Pretty crazy. Uh, Five out of his last 10 games, he's covered this. The Utah matchup is a pretty good one when it comes to scoring um, in head-to-head matchups. That was his only game against Utah with the 24 points. His rebound prop, though, seven and a half. He's covered this in three out of his last 10. He only had seven rebounds in that last game against Utah despite Dallas destroying them. So if I had to take a pick, probably the over in his points, but 13 and a half points, somewhat difficult if you're depending on others to feed you the ball. So a lot of his points are assisted or they're put back. So, yeah, I'd be a little bit hesitant about Daniel Gafford in this game, but I do hope he dunks all over the joint because that'd be great to watch. Let's have a look at the Philadelphia 76ers versus Sacramento Kings in this game. Kyle Lowry, uh, Covington, Melton, Kai Jones, all game time decisions in this one. So. Let's have a look at Kelly Oubre first. Broke our hearts. I bet on him to go over his points prop. I think that was 17 and a half in that last game against the Clippers. He only finished on 12. Didn't play in the fourth quarter, which is highly frustrating. I think he had 10 points at halftime. So we can see his minutes are down. Only played 24 minutes in that game. And part of the reason why is that 
the team that the Philadelphia 76ers had on the court for that fourth quarter against the Clippers, they ran right. I think they outscored the Clippers by 20 points. So I don't blame the coach for not putting Kelly Oubre in. Philly are doing very well. So I'm not averse to taking Kelly Oubre once again in this game. So in terms of this game against the Kings, six out of his last 10 games, he's covered this line. The Kings do defend threes quite well. So I'm not overly keen on taking his over here, but I do think he'll play his full complement of minutes, about 33 minutes in this game. His assist prop did interest me because he had six assists against the Clippers in the last game. Um, but it's a very small sample size of him getting assists. He's covered in five of his last 10, four consecutive games. Two and a half assists at plus money for Kelly Oubre. I do like it. The matchup is a difficult one, so won't be something that I take. But Tobias Harris, he had a great game against the Kings, but as promised to you guys, we're not touching Tobias Harris. We're not even going to waste our time looking at it. Tyrese Maxey. So his line's at 25 and a half. He has covered this in six of his last 10 games. Matchup somewhat difficult. Went under in his last game against the Kings, but covering in one of his last two. Assist-wise, three of his last 10. Well, three of his last four, really. One out of his last two against the Kings. And his rebound prop, five and a half. Oh, sorry. Three and a half. Three of his last 10 games. And went under with three billboards last two games against Sacramento. His three-point prop, two and a half. He's covered in seven of his last 10. Difficult matchup, though. And covered in one of two against the Kings. So I'm not loving Tyrese Maxey in this game. Let's head over, head over to the Kings. So we just had a bet on Demarcus Sabonis in his last game. He took, um, took him over 13 and a half boards. Up against Mo Bamba in this one. Does have a good matchup. Points-wise, 18 and a half, six of his last 10 games. In head-to-head, 76ers, two out of his last three. Might be an overreaction there, but you'd have to double-check how many times did he verse Embiid because that could potentially impact his scoring ability. Assist-wise, 8.5. He's covered in four out of his last 10. Difficult matchup here. He's covered in one of last three against Philly. Then we go to his rebound, rebound prop, which has increased to 14.5. He's covered in six out of his last 10. The matchup somewhat difficult, and he's gone under in three straight games against Philly. So Sabonis so not on my radar for this game. Darren Fox, his line's at 24.5. Tough matchup against Philly. Five out of his last 10. One out of his last three. Looking at his assists, the line's at five and a half. Four of his last 10. Gone under in three straight. One out of his last three against Philly. And rebounds, five and a half. Five out of his last 10, but under in three straight against the 76ers. So obviously, there's nothing I love about Darren Fox and Demana Sabonis, which means someone else probably has a good opportunity to step up here. Uh, lines from Malik Monk aren't available. I'd love to see those right about now. I think there's a good chance for Malik Monk to have a big game. Let's check out Keegan Murray, though. So as of late, been pretty decent. Four out of his last 10, he's been getting busy. His matchup's not too bad, but he's in one of three against Philly. So we don't like him. Harassment Barnes. Now, I bet he's over in his first quarter. Check this out. 10 of 10. I think he's hit in 12 straight games now. He's gone over his first quarter points prop. Um, in head-to-head matchups, he did score zero last time against Philly in six minutes. Uh, that last game he did go over against Orlando, only finished on four points. So I'm not man enough to take this again. I felt lucky that we hit it last time. Looking at his points, probably 12 and a half, though. One of three against Philly, five out of his last 10. So I'm not loving that. I will check Malik Monk lines. Prior. My God, too much talking, choking my lungs out. I will check Malik Monk lines prior to the game coming out. Uh, could be a good matchup there for him, but can't tell you at this point. Let's jump into the last game. It's the Indiana Pacers versus Los Angeles Clippers. So Westbrook's a game time decision, which is interesting. PJ Tucker and two others that I haven't seen play before for the Clippers. The Pacers are at full strength in this game. So a lot of players available. We'll start with the uh, Clippers first. James Harden. Now points-wise, matchup's not too bad, but he's covered in three out of his last ten. In head-to-head matchups, did score 35 points the last time he versed the Pacers. Looking at his assists, six out of his last 10 games, finding his assist form once again. Only had nine assists against the Pacers last time. Rebounds, he's covered in two of his last 10. Had only three rebounds against the Pacers last time. Kawhi Leonard, his points prop, 24 and a half. He's covered in three out of his last 10. Great matchup here against the Pacers, but he's covered in one of his last two. This wise the line's three and a half. He's gone under in seven consecutive games now. And in head-to-heads, he's gone over in one in two. 
Rebound wise, lines at six and a half. Two out of his last ten. Got under in two straight against the 76ers. So I probably lean to the under in his whole PRA or his rebounds plus assists, but he does have a great matchup here against the Pacers, so I'd be a little bit hesitant. Poor George, his lines at 23 and a half or 24 and a half, depending on where you take it. Had a mad streak, came into Philly, only scored 18. Scored nothing in the last quarter, believe it or not. He's covered this in six of his last 10. For those of you who didn't know, Paul George used to play for the Indiana Pacers. And when he plays up against them, he seems to bring out his best. Checking out his last two head-to-head games, 45 and 27 points against the Pacers. That's still not enough for me to want to take this. Assist-wise, three and a half. Four of his last 10, two straight against the Pacers. And his rebound prop, five and a half. Only three of his last 10, one of two against Indiana. So... Yeah, I'm not feeling poor George in this one. I'm not feeling anyone from the Clippers, to be honest. Um, hopefully Russ comes in and steals everybody's stats. I always love seeing that. But let's have a look at these paces. Pascal Siakam, his points prop, 23 and a half. Most likely Kawhi Leonard's going to be defending him. Not so difficult matchup, but he has covered in three straight, five out of his last 10. Looking at his assists, three and a half. He's covered in five out of his last 10. And if we look at his rebound prop, he's been rebounding out of his mind seven consecutive games. Did take the over seven and a half rebounds against the Los Angeles Lakers, which cashed. His line's still at seven and a half, minus 135, though, so you've got to do some line shopping. One of my sports books, I had a quick look. I could get him at, like, minus 120, so I'm strongly considering that. So he's been rebounding very well. The matchup is not an easy one. It's not a hard one either, don't get me wrong. Um, so this is a strong lean of mine at the moment. Do I take Pascal Siakam again? It's been, a, I think, two or three games in a row now I've taken his rebound prop. So, yeah, I'm a little bit on the fence, but do we just ride that until the, the wheels come off? Tyrese Halliburton, his points prop, 18 and a half. He's hit this in five out of his last 10 games. Not, not too bad of a matchup here against the Clippers, but he's covered in one of his last three. Assists, you're looking at 10 and a half. Six out of his last 10, two out of his last three against the Clippers. Rebounds, six of his last 10, two out of his last three. Now, there's one play that I was looking at potentially taking the, the under on, and it's this, his three-point props. He hasn't been shooting very well. He's shooting 26% from deep in his last 10 games. Terrible. He's taking seven attempts, though, so this could be a real sweaty bet. The matchup's not too difficult. He's gone under in eight out of his last 10, but I don't know if I could handle it knowing this guy's going to shoot six to seven three-pointers in this game, and we need him not to make three. So I'm I'm not going to take it, but it's one that I have considered. Let's have a look at Miles Turner. His points prop, 14 and a half. He's covered in four of his last 10 in head-to-head to matchups. One out of his last two against the Clippers. Does have a tough matchup in this one. Rebounds, six and a half to the line. Five out of his last 10. Gone under in two straight against the Clippers. So given the challenges he's had against the Clippers in the past, well, he's got 34 against them, right? So I wouldn't even call them challenges. I'm not even going to suggest leaning to the under on this one. So for this particular game, Pascal Siakam, probably the only one that has my attention, um, but we'll see. So for those of you, it's your first time. Um, I do this for free. I do it every single day. All I ask for you to like, sub to the channel and show some support. If you've got the extra funds, you can use Super Thanks. Chuck me a dollar or two for all the hard work I do for you. I'm just kidding. But the... If you are interested in tailing the bets that I take, I'm close to 70 units profit so far this NBA season. I do have some great winning streaks, and I have some of the worst losing streaks you'll ever see in the world of YouTube and sports betting. I have some of the worst streaks you'll ever see. But things are going quite well at the moment. If you're interested in tailing me, you can check the pinned comment. I post those about an hour after I make the video and upload it. Um, But if you do want to see more content of mine, just click on the video over here. Nice little, in, not an interview, it's probably more of a tutorial on how to, if you are interested in seeing more of me and my content, just click on the video over here. It takes you through my end-to-end process. So on these videos, you get to see what I do to shortlist my players. But if you check out this video here, you get to see what are all the different things I take into consideration before I place those bets. If you made it this far, you're a fucking legend and I appreciate you. I shall catch you in the next one. Sub to the channel because your boy's getting busy. Coming to you live from the west side of Sydney. We've got the free picks and the juice and the daily. It's all free. You don't even have to pay me.